Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. These are soldering accessories that you need to know. And they go from cheap to expensive to homemade to pre-bought and we're gonna cover them all. And we're gonna cover them all quickly. The first one you need to know could save your life. This is the BNH60 SU107 uh, timer. And if you've ever soldered or if you have a curling iron or anything like that, um, you know that it's very, very easy to leave it on. And so what I've learned to do, I bought this a couple months ago and this has changed my life. I come over here and I push the button for the approximate amount of time that I'm gonna solder. And that will turn my soldering iron on for at most an hour. I have a cat and I have a, a shop that's real easy to get distracted and walk away and forget that I left my soldering iron on even all night. And to know that this thing is gonna turn itself off uh, is pretty awesome. And you can hit a button, turn it off. You can also repeat um, if you're in the middle of it and you wanna reset that one hour timer. But this thing is about 10 bucks and it could save your life. Speaking of saving your life, you need a fume extractor. Now, this is one that I built myself that I don't know that I've ever actually shown off on the channel, but it has a 120 millimeter fan up front, a little place to plug the power, a little speed control that's a little crooked. And one thing I learned is that it is way better at filtering if I put the filter on the back and keep the fan unobstructed in the front. Now, as you can see, all kinds of stuff has gotten sucked into this that could have gotten sucked into my lungs. One of the other features I did, now again, I'm gonna have a link so you can buy one if you just want to be easy but I put these quarter inch connectors on here and that allows me to take all these different accessories that I have and just put them in the front like this and so I can bend these things around and I've got a built-in solder holder and one of the things that allows me to do is to keep the part directly in front of the fan while I'm working on it so uh, whether you make one or buy one you need one next up this is another one that I DIY'd that you could absolutely buy if you want to but I took this foot long bolt right here and ran it through a couple of pieces of uh, MDF that I just glued up and I made my own solder holder and so this allows me to just pick it up move it wherever I want it and have my solder wherever I need it. And uh, if you're gonna do something like this, I mean, there's a lot of ways to buy ones that'll do just one roll or maybe two rolls, but I like having them all in one place. So I can use my super tiny silver bearing solder. I can use my thicker solder that I use with the 100 watt guns or some of the other Kester stuff that I just use on a daily basis. But whether you buy it or make one, you definitely want a place to put your solder. So I'm going to put this next one in the nice to have, not need to have category, but a microscope is very, very handy. Now, a lot of people envision themselves soldering underneath the microscope, but I actually don't like that. I like using it for inspection to check my work. There are models all over the place ranging from $50 up to $450. I'm going to link to some cheap ones, which are probably good enough for 99% of the people, but I'll also put a couple if you're looking for a luxury gift. While I don't like soldering under the microscope, I do like soldering with these magnifying goggles. And uh, these things are relatively cheap on Amazon. As you can see, I permanently attached mine to a baseball cap backwards. And uh, that allows me to just take the thing on and off and not fiddle with this knob for adjusting, not worrying about it coming loose or anything like that. But um, it's got a light on it. It allows you to see in stereo, which you can't do with the uh, microscope. And it is just the ideal tool, in my opinion, for soldering. One of the things you need if you're gonna solder is some flux. And one of the cool ways to dispense flux is with one of these little solder flux pens. And this allows you to just basically draw on the board and you get just a little bit of flux where you need it. Now, if you're looking for a different way to deploy flux, I also like this um, US Forge liquid flux. And I love these little bottles. Now I have all kinds of stuff in them, vinegar, deoxid, silicone, uh, flux, and, and probably 10 more of them around my office. So you just take this liquid flux and you put it in here and you can distribute it one drop at a time. But whether you go with something like a chip quick pen or a US Forge little bottle here, you need flux for your projects. One soldering accessory that I absolutely could not live without is this solder mat, the S160. It's a 450 millimeter by 300 millimeter soldering mat. Silicone means you can just set the soldering iron right on the thing. Um, it protects my other work surface. There's magnets here that catch all kinds of little flying parts. There were little covers on these things, uh, but just all kinds of little part storage areas and magnetic areas and places to put your little resistors so you can put them in in order. And this is absolutely an essential soldering accessory. Now, some of the ones you can get them or not get them, you need one of these mats and they're not very expensive. You can get them off Amazon. I'll have a link in the description to the right one, uh, but just so much good use for something like this. 
Another thing that I consider pretty much essential are these little side cutters. And uh, these things are relatively cheap. Sometimes they're known by the P170, I think they're called. Uh, but I've switched over to these ones from Amazon because they're like $12, $12 for five of them. Uh, you can see you get a whole box of them here. And uh, they do wear out over time. I mean, I'd say if, if it was the only one you had, uh, you'd probably get a good five, six months out of it, then it's probably time to change it out before it gets a little bit dull. But uh, these are kind of the go-to gold standard in soldering, cutting accessories. You solder a resistor, you cut the pin off, and uh, you know, it's just a very good little flush cutting uh, pair of pliers, and I like buying them in bulk. Speaking of cheap cutting implements, um, I've switched over to starting to use these Pros Kits CP301G um, wire strippers. Now they are not the nicest wire strippers I have by a long margin, but they do very tiny wires. They do from 30 down to 20 gauge or up to 20 gauge. And uh, they're cheap. They're five bucks, Amazon Prime. You can just throw them onto another order you already have. Again, not the best strippers in the bunch, but they are um, really cheap and really accessible. And they're the type of thing that you switch out once a year, but you always have a, a sharp set of, uh, of strippers. And I mean, and I dull my clines all the time. I basically was replacing those once a year anyway. So to have something like this, I can keep over the soldering station. It locks, a little place to hang it, a little place to bend the wire. Uh, not the most comfortable, not the highest quality, but definitely the cheapest. This is one of those things that I absolutely could not live without, and you can tell by how dirty and melted it is. It is the SN390 soldering board holder, and it's got these little spring-loaded thingies over here, and you can snap your board in and rotate it 360 degrees while you are working with it. Um, it's adjustable in several different directions to allow you to get the board into a comfortable position so that you can solder safely. Um, it's very dangerous to sit there and try to hold the board while you're doing it. You melt stuff. Um, this is just a great, more comfortable way to do it. Um, now, I mean, obviously it is possible for the clips here to get in the way of things, but for the most part, there's always a way to turn the board and orient it to where you're not trying to grip the part that you're trying to work on. So this is the SM390 soldering board holder. So a good connection is a clean connection and one of the ways to make sure that you have a clean connection is to make sure the tip of your iron is clean. And one of my favorite ways to do that is with this little copper stuff here. Um, this thing is relatively cheap. I think you can get it for like five bucks. Um, and you just jam the tip in there and you can already see how much clearer and cleaner the tip is um, compared to what it was. And then beyond that, uh, my second way to do it is this stuff called Tip Refresher and it's by a company called Mechanic. Um, I've had this for probably two years and you can see that's all I've used. Um, but it looks like this, this mechanic uh, brand tip refresher. And the idea is when you're done using your tip, you clean it and put it away. And it's just a good way to store it and keep the oxidation off the tip and uh, make sure that it lasts as long as possible. If you find yourself soldering, you will find yourself using heat shrink. And one of the things I like for heat shrink is a little heat gun. And I kind of like this little portable one. I've had one of the ones that was attached to the soldering station. Didn't particularly love it. Um, I really like this tip because what it allows you to do is to put your part in there and it deflects the heat back around so you can actually get the uh, um, heat shrink shrunk on all sides at once. It's portable, it's relatively quiet. Um, it's got a little stand here, it's upside down right now, but it's got a little stand there so you can keep it up off the table, which means that you can actually turn it like this, leave it like this, and your heat gun can stay there and you can operate it um, without actually touching the heat gun at all. So um, this is the Tac Life uh, heat gun, relatively cheap and extremely well reviewed. So one of the things about soldering is it seems like you never have enough hands. And uh, my wife 3D printed this for me and it is so cool. Um, so what you do when you're trying to solder two wires together end to end, you can actually just kind of pinch them down here in the 3D printed surface and it will hold them roughly in place. You still twist them together, but it'll hold them in place so that you can get in here and solder without trying to hold the wires themselves. So essentially you can print this for about 10 cents yourself. I'll link to the one on Thingiverse. Speaking of hands, um, soldering often requires getting tiny things into your hands. And uh, there's a lot of different types of soldering tweezers, but I've kind of settled on these ones with the ceramic tips here. And even more, I find myself reaching for these reversible ones. These ones, when you squeeze, it opens up and when you let go, it holds it. And what that allows me to do is to just pick the part up and then not be worried about um, actually trying to keep pressure on the tweezers. Every once in a while, if I need real delicate touch, I'll use the other style. Um, but for the most part, I really like like these ones that just self-close and so um, they come in three packs and so you can get 
three of each style and uh, there's different shapes and things like that and these are um, heat resistant and non-magnetic so your parts don't stick to them and stuff like that so just a very good buy and a very cool little soldering accessory so if you've seen my channel, you know that one of my favorite tools of all time is this Hakko desoldering gun. And I'll link to this one and a cheaper version of it. But uh, it basically heats up your solder joint and sucks. And uh, it will pull out solder when you make a mistake and allow you to uh, remove parts without damaging them, hopefully. And uh, it is what I would consider, if not essential, close to essential if you're going to do a lot of that kind of work. Now, there is a cheap little alternative, which is just a little solder pump and you put it on there and you suck it and you can see that um, it sucked it up and tried to suck up the solder. Uh, these things are nowhere near as good as the Hacko thing. They'll get it done and I guess if you buy nicer ones they're a little bit better than some other ones. But for the most part, um, these things suck and this thing sucks better. Um, now, the other way to do it is with something like this desoldering braid and you put some flux on it and you heat it up next to the joint. You can see the solder kind of wicks its way up and uh, it's not a bad way to desolder, but I've definitely damaged a couple things because you have to do it over and over and over again. And uh, in my mind, this tool or one like it is worth all the money that it costs. Last and probably least, this is the uh, RST FG 100 solder temperature checker. And uh, the idea with this is normally you'd heat it up and put some uh, solder on there, but you put the tip of the soldering iron on that little wire thingy and as it goes up it tells you the temperature of your iron and it's just a decent way to check to make sure that your iron is putting out uh, what it's supposed to it uses these little replaceable thermocouples here having a hard time getting that in focus um it's cool i mean you probably don't need it but if you're looking for a gift for somebody who does a lot of soldering somebody who kind of has everything it's kind of a fun little add-on for somebody who already has everything so Anyway, what did I miss? Do you have any soldering accessories that you love? Um, are there anything that I recommended that you hate? Let me know in the comments. I'll have links for everything. And hey, thanks for watching.